Today we're looking at a pretty cool math magazine problem that combines complex numbers and geometry. But of course, these ideas are pretty intimately connected naturally. Okay, so let's see what we've got. Let's say that we've got three complex numbers, A, B, and C. Their modulus is one, and they satisfy this equation here, A cubed plus B cubed plus C cubed is equal to two A, B, C. And our goal is to show that these are the vertices of an isosceles triangle. So I've got a picture kind of being built over here. So the circle that I have is gonna be the unit circle in the complex plane. And then, well, of course, I've put my points A, B, and C on this unit circle. And I've oriented them counterclockwise so that we're reading A, B, and C. If they're not automatically oriented like that, we can always do a reflection to get them oriented as such. Okay, so let's get started with our solution, which is modeled after one of the solutions from this magazine. Okay, so I'd like to start with the following fact, and that is if the modulus of a complex number is 1, then that means that 1 over that complex number is simply equal to the complex conjugate of that number. I think that kind of goes without saying. It's really built off of this fact right here that if you take z times z bar, you get the modulus of z squared. But then of course, you also know that z or the modulus of z is bigger than or equal to zero. So if you know the modulus squared is one, well, then the modulus has to be 1, but then 1 over z is equal to the modulus just by maybe dividing by z in this equation right here. Okay, so anyway, there's really not much to that. But what does that mean? Well, that means if we take the modulus of this equation, we get something interesting. So I'm just going to write this down as a cubed plus b cubed plus c cubed bar equals 2abc bar. But of course, the modulus can be factored in to multiplication as well as addition. It's an additive operation. And in fact, it's like a homomorphism or an automorphism of the field of complex numbers. Okay, so factoring it in here, we'll have the modulus of a cubed with the modulus of a, or sorry, the complex conjugate of a cubed but the complex conjugate of A is one over A by our observation we have right over there. So really we have one over A cubed plus one over B cubed plus one over C cubed is another representation of this left-hand side. And then of course over here on this right-hand side we'll have two over A times B times C. Now what I wanna do is take this equation and multiply it by a times b times c cubed. We're doing that to clear all the denominators so we end up with a polynomial equation. So that's gonna end up with a cubed times b cubed plus a cubed times c cubed plus b cubed times c cubed over here on the left-hand side. Obviously, it doesn't arrive in that order, but I think this is maybe a natural order. Notice a times b times c all cubed over a cubed will give us this b cubed c cubed term. Okay, and then over here on the right-hand side, we'll have 2 times a times b times c times another a times b times c. In other words, a times b times c squared. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the two times a times b times c and replace it with a cubed plus b cubed plus c cubed, leaving us with a times b times c times uh, a cubed plus b cubed plus c cubed. Okay, great. But now we can multiply this out and we'll have a to the fourth times b c plus a times b to the fourth c plus a times b times c to the fourth. And now the next part of this is pretty tricky and not super obvious, but what we'll do is we'll move perhaps this left-hand side of the equation to the right-hand side of the equation and start to factor. And I'll let you check, but this will give us the following factorization. 
we'll have a squared minus bc times b squared minus ac times c squared minus ab is equal to zero, which of course gives us three possibilities. We either have a squared is equal to bc, we have b squared is equal to ac, or we have c squared is equal to ab. Okay, so I think that's kind of nice. But now what we can do is we can divide and we'll end up with equations like this. So we'll have a over b is equal to c over a, or we'll have b over c is equal to a over b, or, or we'll have c over a is equal to b over c. So for instance, if we divide this first equation by a times b, notice the left-hand side will be a over b, because one of the a's cancels, and the right-hand side will be c over a, because the b cancels. And then we get these others via similar calculations. Okay, so let's see where this takes us. Thanks for sticking around this long into the video. If you're enjoying the video, make sure and hit the thumbs up, and if you haven't yet subscribed, consider doing so, it really helps us out. Okay, so let's see what we have. We ended up with these three possibilities. A over B is C over A, B over C is A over B, or C over A is B over C. And let's see what we can get out of these, and in order to make our next step, we're gonna use this fact up here that the modulus of all of these numbers is one. So that means that we could write a as e to the i alpha, we could write b as e to the i beta, and finally we could write c as e to the i gamma, and we might as well take alpha, beta, and gamma on the interval from zero to two pi. And now, for instance, let's look at what our equations right here tell us about these angles that we have introduced. So this peach equation, tells us that e to the i alpha minus beta must be equal to e to the i gamma minus alpha. And then maybe I'll underline this one in red. And then this red equation tells us that e to the i beta minus alpha must be equal to e to the i, or sorry, that's beta minus gamma, e to the i alpha minus beta. And finally, this one right here that I'm underlining in blue will tell us that e to the i gamma minus alpha must be equal to e to the i beta minus gamma. Okay, but let's get these on this picture over here. Okay, so I'm gonna go here to the origin and then draw rays to each of my vertices. So if I draw rays to each of my vertices, we can see what each of these angles is measuring. Notice that this angle right here will be beta minus alpha. And then let's see, this angle right here will be gamma minus beta. And finally, this angle right here is gonna be alpha minus gamma. And then also we know this kind of standard geometric fact about these angles situated in a circle that um, alpha minus gamma is equal to twice the measurement of angle A, B, C. And beta minus alpha, which is right here, has gotta be twice the angle B, C, A. And then finally, we've got one more, this gamma minus beta which is gonna be twice BAC. So gamma minus beta is gonna be twice the measurement of angle BAC. Okay, great. But now let's observe that this right here tells us that alpha minus beta would be equal to gamma minus alpha. This red one tells us that beta minus gamma is equal to alpha minus beta. And then finally, this one tells us that uh, gamma minus alpha must be equal to beta minus gamma. But let's see. This alpha minus beta equals gamma minus alpha will tell us that these two angles right here are the same. Angle ABC and angle BCA. And then this beta minus gamma equals alpha minus beta. Let's see, that will tell us 
that these two are the same, BCA and ACB. And let's see, finally, gamma minus alpha being equal to beta minus gamma will tell us that these outer two are the same. So any way you slice it, we've got two equal angles inside of this triangle, but that condition shows that they are isosceles. And that's a good place to stop.